gostaria de chamar. I'd like to invite to the floor the Mayor of São Paulo, João Dória. everyone. Thank you again for the invitation. I've had the opportunity to speak to Helio Magalhães and all the director, uh, all the board at MCHAM in a room uh, just next door, thanking them. But thank you, thanks again. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. Deborah Stern, uh, CEO of MCHAM Brazil. Helio Magalhães, a good friend, president of the council of the board here at MCHAM. Hag Hailed, Melzi, uh, Vice President of Corporate uh, Relations. Wilson Poitier, our Secretary of Denationalization and Partnerships uh, with the City of Sao Paulo government, uh, Secretary of International Relations, and all of you uh, who are here this morning. Well, let me know uh, when there are five minutes to end. I'd like to start by showing you a four-minute video. Our focus this morning will be the program of denationalizing and partnerships that the uh, government of the city of Sao Paulo is uh, implementing. It's being approved at the chamber. What needs uh, approval is being approved, but what can be done uh, by the mayor will be done by the mayor. So this is the most robust uh, denationalizing program ever done in a city in Brazil. We're doing it because we believe an efficient state is a useful state. The state, the right size of the state is the size right to produce quality goods, the desirable size and the performance and efficiency in public services. So we will have a broad PPP programs. We have a we will have a lot of partnerships and, and privatization. I'm not afraid of talking about privatization. It's like a stigma talking about privatization in Brazil, but I'm really not afraid. I'd like to start by saying I'm not a politician. I, res I respect politicians. My father was a politician. Uh, he was... Uh, he, I'm very proud of all, the, all his positions. Uh, he lost his... Uh, term his office uh, because of his positions but so I'm, I'm not like a politician you can criticize and I'm not criticizing politicians or public life but I am not a politician I'm not uh, saying I am disgusted at uh, politicians but I am a manager I'm doing in the public sector what I used to do or I did for 40 years, 45 years in the private sector. So I have no problem talking about privatization. No difficulty whatsoever to defend what's important, what's necessary for the country and for the population. I have no intention, I'm no candidate for uh, presidency or governor, not even re-election. I, I clearly said when I was elected that I'm against re-election. I think it's bad. So it's management, efficient management, transparency and innovation. These are the basis of what we do. And a very clear objective, serving the poorest, humblest people first. They are really our priority. And when we have a program like this that we will sh uh, you will see in these four minutes, that's because the resources that will come from this program will be destined primarily to the poorest, and 100% for social development. And in this order, health, education, popular housing, urban mobility, social assistance, and public security. These are the priorities for uh, the, the poorest. We won't uh, denationalize uh, with, the, with the fund of denationalizing to pay debts. The mayor has prohibited this. It's 100% directed at 
social programs. The debts must be paid, the costs must be taken care of, but with other resources. Uh, these resources will go to social programs. And I'll explain why it's, a sh it's essential to have a vision of this broadness, especially in the peripheral areas, the poorest areas of the city. But now let's uh, watch a four-minute video to see what the basis of this denationalization program for the city of Sao Paulo is. The largest city in the Americas. The largest financial center in the Southern Hemisphere. The most important technology ecosystem in emerging markets. LATAM headquarters of 65% of Fortune 500. Sao Paulo, city of the world. The city that is constantly moving. 18% of the nation's GDP. Multicultural and friendly. Sao Paulo welcomes and embraces. Main host city of Latin events. The leading city for FDI in Latin. Sao Paulo, the city that has its own pace. A fast pace. Sao Paulo is proud to launch the biggest privatization program in its history open and doing business on important assets in several areas. Sports and events. Interlagos Speedway. IMB. Pacambu Stadium. Leisure and shopping. Ibirpuera Park. Sao Paulo Central Market. Transportation. Bus terminals. Public Transportation Ticketing System. Social Care. Funeral Services. Public Services. Public Street Lighting. Real Estate. Municipal assets in strategic areas. Fast Track. The city's unique world-class Fast Track framework to ensure all the investment projects will be successfully implemented. A tool designed to facilitate and strengthen new business. Sao Paulo supports investors with preferential assistance to priority projects and initiatives. Lower cost and time, less bureaucracy, higher transparency, with legal certainty. New opportunities and new perspectives you will find in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, city of the world, driving business in Latin America.
that's it thank you thank you so this is a, sh a display that it's possible to to do public management in a different way understanding sao paulo as a global city not as a province and it's not ideological it's not a party thing it's a management of efficiency. I have a good team. I didn't ask them if they voted for me. I didn't ask what party they were, if they had ideology of, or party ideology or philosophical ideologies. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is the CV. Are you good? Are you competent? Are you serious? So you can come and contribute. The secretary here, Wilson, was Fernando Haddad's secretary. Should I be worried that he was the secretary of the previous uh, mayor? He's not in my party. Should I be worried that he's not in my party? No, he's competent. He's good. He came from the private sector. He knows the sector. Let's make it. Let's let's make a team, a competent team, and make people a priority, not the party, not ideologies. This is the transformation that we're doing in Sao Paulo. In four months, we got to a point to a level of over 70% approval. I'm very happy. I'm not. Uh, looking for uh, this approval. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a good management, but if it's approved, it means you're doing the right things in the right way. And this way of management uh, has influenced other regions of the country, other cities, and there are uh, surveys already, polls uh, for president. Again, I'm not a candidate. Uh, I'm, my, my function is to be a good manager. I was elected for that. I said to Berenger, to Berenger uh, I was elected with my proposals, not because of my political tra tradition. It was my first election. We had 53% of the votes here, the largest electoral uh, sec session, section of the country. I didn't harm anyone who uh, was running with me. I, I was not rude. You know, the, the things that politicians do very often, they destroy the other people, they uh, say bad things about the other candidates. I just focused on my programs and the population understood. We won the election in one month, 45 days of uh, electoral program. We moved from 2% to 53%, winning in the first round for the first time in 28 years. Uh, never has anyone won the election in Sao Paulo in the first round. And we won because of proposals. Now I have to meet my uh, proposals. Uh, normally, people don't do what they promise, but we're doing it with a good team, with clear objectives, with collective meetings, with targets, uh, with awards. We give awards to those who are working, who are working well, and we uh, pen penalize those who are working badly. This is what you do in the private sector, and we're doing in the public sector as well. I was talking to the board at Amcham that yesterday we celebrated the largest contribution, largest donation to a city, a, a U.S. company, Cisco, with technology, 300 million reals, uh, 100 million dollars, with no counterpart, zero counterpart. Cisco, with the support of U Cisco U.S., came here with a meeting, uh, the president of Brazil and uh, the the Cisco president in Brazil and the president in the U.S., they came here. There were no counterparts, but uh, they're giving technology. And do you know why? For education, 100% uh, technological schools, 21st century schools, this is what we need, the, especially the poorest children. They don't want to learn with chalk and a, a blackboard. They want computers and tablets. And this is what will form a new generation of Brazilians, educated and prepared to to have a living as professionals, as entrepreneurs, as employees. Uh, this will also uh, eliminate dependency with an educated population, educated children. They won't need any social uh, assistantialist program to maintain them in a, on a lead uh, permanently to, ex to exchange the benefit for votes. This is the transformation we need uh, for Brazil. This is what we want to do in Brazil. And the US company helped us do this and together with other investments 324 million we had obtained from several companies Brazilian companies multinationals 624 million reais uh, in investments construction materials uh, office uh, 
materials, uh, school materials, uh, technological equipment, uh, medicines, clothing for people uh, living in the streets, uh, blankets. It's uh, endless items that were donated to cars, motorbikes, paint, construction material. Uh, in several sectors, companies donating without any counterpart, only from their uh, willing to be a citizen company. And I'd like to say, I was talking to Pedro Melo from KPMG, KPMG. He was with me in this previous uh, meeting. Uh, and we were saying that journalists are saying, ah, there's something behind this. How can somebody donate something without any interest? The world is changing. This is not PT, the Labour Party. We're not changing uh, attitude to for uh, triplex apartments in Guarijá. It's different. And we don't even have to use the name of our children or our dead wives to try to justify what is just injustifiable. It's a different attitude, totally different. Companies do want to help us. And they want to have their social equity in display, either to the employees or the shareholders. Life is not just profit. It's also about giving and sharing. This is what makes a country happier and stronger. And I know the business world. I know what is the character of companies and the executives of companies. So I would like to invite you. I know that many of you are already helping us. But if you are not, you can start right now. You can talk to Helio and come help us however you can. Every help is welcome, regardless of the industry where you work, if you provide services, if you want to donate money, we can do so. You can donate money to social actions to help uh, homeless people. We have 25,000 homeless people in Sao Paulo. We have a new project to help these people. You can help with your money, with your donations. These people are everywhere, and every donation is welcome. And the city will not, this, these donations are not for the city. These, these will go to NGOs that will help the people in need. So I invite you to support us, regardless of how much you can give. Just the willingness to help us is very welcome. Julio here, our International Relations Secretary, Mr. Point, and Helio can help us if you're interested in helping our city. I'd like to take these last few minutes to talk a little bit more about this digitalization program and also our solidarity program of the citizen companies of the city of Sao Paulo. We now have a certification of citizen company to all the companies that want to help our city. We have 107 parks in the city of Sao Paulo, and the parks in our city are just like the beaches in other cities, because the parks uh, are just as important for the local population as the beaches are for the population of Rio de Janeiro, for example. And they cost a lot to us, nearly 200 million reals per year to manage all the parks in the city. It's a lot of money, and actually, it, this money is not even enough because we will we will never be able to to be excellent at that with this money so i ask for the help of the private sector i talked to unilever and asked for them for their support i talked to cirella cirella is also helping us now we are renovating the 16 restrooms inside the ibirapuera park um, Bev is also helping us renovate all the sports courts in Ibirapuera. Nike is uh, improving the soccer field in Ibirapuera. Cirela, the construction company, is helping us uh, renovate all the buildings inside the park. And this is what we're doing now. We're asking for cooperation with no counterpart. And we see uh, the willingness that companies have to help us. There was an article in newspaper Estadão about Park Alfredo Volpi, which I frequented when I used to live in the district of Morumbi. The park is now totally deteriorated and they need 10 million to be able to recover that park. 10 million reals, but we don't have that money. We have a, we got a deficit 
of 7.5 billion reals from the last administration, and there's no way we can come up with this money right now. However, just complaining about what happened or the previous administration uh, will not help us. Let's try to find creative solutions to solve the current problems of our city. So right next to the park, there is a hospital, a reference hospital, Hospital San Luis from Redidor. So I called the executive president of Redidor, which is my old friend and is now based in Rio in Sao Paulo. And Jorge, the founder of Redidor, said, well, the hospital is right next to the park, so why, why not adopt the park if the employees, the medical staff, uh, the, the, and all employees of the hospital are using the park, this would be a very uh, a beautiful initiative of the hospital. You know how much it took me to convince them 30 seconds. At the end of the call, it was done. Regardless of how much they started sponsoring the park, there is a contract for that, it's a legal procedure, and since May 2nd this year, they are administering that park and they are investing a huge amount of money in recovering the flora, uh, improving lighting, security. There's a little chapel inside, they're going to renovate it. So it's a creative way of administering the city and of having companies uh, show people that they care with no counterpart. This is good for their reputation, and of course, it's good for their professionals, for their shareholders, and even the family members of the patients of that hospital, which uh, sometimes spend several days in the hospital, and they can walk in the park. So do you see the difference of this new type of creative manager, which is no longer stuck to those old and outdated references, if we don't have money, we cannot do it, and end of story. That is not a proactive attitude. The attitude of a manager has to be seeking creative ways of making things happen. Always setting priorities. Healthcare, education, public housing, public security, and social assistance. To enable practical actions that will help people in need for example, the crackland here in Sao Paulo is a social problem, and it's also a criminal problem, of course, but it's a social problem uh, primarily, and we are going to act. But first, we're going to plan, just like we do in the private sector. You don't do things uh, randomly. Of course, we have to be fast, and I've always been someone very fast and objective when making decisions, but first we need to plan, we need to think about it, we need to establish our strategy, our timelines, the risks, and then we start working. And this has been enabling us, even at high, high paces, to uh, do many more things right than wrong. Of course, we do make mistakes, but we will not refrain from doing because of the possibility of making mistakes. Any company that wants to lead a market, any executive, shareholder, president of a company, uh, if they think that they'd rather not do something not to, to avoid the risks, uh, that's not the right attitude. They're going to be uh, swallowed by the competition, right? And in the public sphere, you're going to be judged by the presence and by your history, by your inability to make things happen. So I'd rather run the risks. I'd rather be courageous and um, run the risks and make things happen than just uh, refrain, afraid of being judged, afraid of being judged by the press or criticized. Uh, by the population. Let me give you an example uh, in these few last minutes. In healthcare, healthcare is our number one priority, and not just of the city, but of the country, because the greatest problem that we have in Brazil is public health from the social standpoint. So during our campaign, we said that we were going to start a project that would reduce the lines a deficit that we have in the end of last year of 486,000 people waiting in a line, 486,000 people waiting in a line to uh, have tests run. Tests that had been scheduled, uh, that were being scheduled for 10 months later, 11 months later, it was just not feasible. How can someone wait more than one year to have a test run? 
And this line was increasing, ever increasing, in local hospitals. So we formed a team and conducted studies. Even during the campaign, we were looking at that. We identified that in private hospitals, and also in public, but mostly in private, they had the periods of the day where the equipment for exams were being less used, uh, were being underutilized, and this was after six in the afternoon. The demand was much lower, and hospitals are working 24 hours a day, right? Hospitals, they never close. Technicians are there, equipment is there, so if the people is available, if the equipment is available, let's occupy that. Let's utilize that. It's about logistics and efficiency. So we quickly talked to some hospitals and we saw that this was the way to go. Edson de Godoy Bueno was one of the people I talked to, a friend of mine that has now passed, and he said, that's a great idea, João. Go ahead. You, you will be successful. And then we talked to one and two and three and four hospitals, and we realized that this was possible. This was feasible. And after we were elected, on January 10th, we were ready, uh, we had already signed agreements with 44 hospitals in the city of Sao Paulo, and we also articulated with public hospitals in the city of Sao Paulo to start the project Corujão. People in need started to go to expensive hospitals such as Albert Einstein, Oswaldo Cruz, Sirio Libanese, H-Core, very renowned hospitals that are frequented just by rich people who have health plans. Because with our new project, uh, lower class people could start frequenting these expensive hospitals. And I promised them that in 90 days, we would zero the deficit. Two new newspapers in Sao Paulo criticized me and said I was lying, that this was not possible. First, before I was elected, and then after I was, after I was elected, they did it again. And they call themselves specialists, right? I love this type of specialist because uh, the newspapers sometimes they choose specialists as they will to prove a point. But we were able to zero the deficit in 83 days, which demonstrates that it is possible to have an efficient management. And this has become an example. A role model, we're going to have a seminar next month with more than 200 mayors from all over Brazil that want to learn from the Project Corujão. And on May, in May uh, uh, next uh, May 20, we're going to start the same project for surgeries in municipal and state hospitals. I have been operated many times because I love to play soccer. And I know that physicians love to operate in the morning, so the afternoon uh, schedule is always empty. So let's use those uh, uh, vacant times to help these people. And of course, they're being paid at the public rates, but it's better for them to be play, paid at the public rates at the time of the day that they weren't being paid at all. It's the same for surgery. It's a little more complex, of course. It takes more time. It's more difficult. Sometimes you have complications and uh, unexpected events. Of course, it is more difficult. But we have 67,000 people waiting for surgeries in the city of Sao Paulo. And we will start uh, shrinking this gap. And I think that by the end of the year, we will have drastically reduce the line of people waiting for surgeries in the public system. And we're doing this by inviting uh, public uh, private hospitals to help us. This is the creative way of doing it. When I uh, when my term started, we didn't have any medications. We had a, a huge uh, stock out of medications. I don't know why the previous administration didn't buy the proper amount. In January, our stocks were empty. They were empty. And our healthcare units, I have been visiting some of these units, basic healthcare units, they didn't have any drugs. They had these long lines of people waiting for those products because they depend on them. They, these are chronic use drugs and people don't have the money to buy them. We have 2.5 million people unemployed in the city of Sao Paulo. They need their drugs, they need their medication. So I asked 
uh, pharmaceutical companies for support. And they just made this monster donation of 126 million reals in drugs donated to the city of Sao Paulo. And the only thing they asked for was a tax exemption. But this is a, the natural result, right? If they're donating 126 million in drugs, in products, then I, I talked to the government and I w w was able to get them a certain level of tax exemption. Of course, this is very bureaucratic. We have to talk to a lot of bodies, different body secretaries and councils. So we did everything we needed to do. Brazil is just unbelievable. Sometimes it will take you 45 days just to schedule a meeting. So we, we had the meeting online through Skype, but we were able to approve the project on time. The governor was our partner in this, and then we were able to get the drugs to the healthcare units on time. Today we have more than 90% of all drugs available in our basic healthcare units. I don't know if there are any uh, drugstore chains present here, but it's the logistics is now similar to what you have in a private drugstore chain. Sometimes, of course, you have a stock out of one or two products, and this is acceptable, but not all of them, right? This is efficient management. This is what really makes the difference. And finally, along these lines, this is how I'm going to continue to work, to continue to do what we need to do. I was elected by the people. I wasn't elected by the press. I wasn't elected by experts. I wasn't elected by a, one, a movement or uh, I, I was elected by the population of the city of Sao Paulo and I report to them. I love my party and I have been affiliated since 2001. And I love my party even before I thought about being a candidate. I really like President Cardozo. I really like Governor Gennardo Alckmin. I really liked uh, Montoro in the past. And I did this because I love my city. And I know how to separate. I always knew how to separate my mission as a businessman and my mission as a citizen. And now I was elected mayor of the largest city in Latin America, and I am going to fulfill my promises. I'm going to manage the city. I'm going to make the transformations needed. Sao Paulo is the capital of Brazil. This is the largest city of the, of the country. And even other nations, colonies that helped build this city, sometimes we have the second largest community of a certain ethnicity in Sao Paulo. And that is why our purpose is non-negotiable. Non we need efficient management. And this is not about my party. This is not about my career. This is not about my future as a politician. My judgment is not what you see on television. I want to benefit the population. I was elected by the, the people. And they are my bosses, and I am very proud to have them as my boss. And after four years, I want to look at my children, Felipe, Carolina, my wife, Bia, who are somehow suffering because they don't have me all the time with them. Now I'm very busy, and uh, I don't spend as much time with my family and my friends, and I work during weekends and holidays, and I work and I visit the entire city. I'm not just in my office. I'm visiting different places in the city, in the outskirts of the city, poorer areas. And I want to, after four years, I want to be proud that I want to look at my children and tell them that it was worth it, that it was worth it, that I was a good mayor, that I fulfilled my mission, that I was honest, that I was transparent, that I caused the real transformation and I helped improve Brazil starting in the city of Sao Paulo. This is what will make me proud. This will, this will honor the memory of my father who fought so much for our country. Everything, and this will also compensate for everything that I did as a businessman because I, I'm also honored to have helped my country as a businessman. This is what makes me happy. This is what makes me proud. And I'm 
I'm also happy for one more reason. This is something that I also said to Berenger this week. I love Brazil. I don't want my children to want to leave Brazil one day. I don't want my children and grandchildren to be ashamed of their, of their country. We need to defend our country. We need to help. This silent majority needs to be a present majority in the country. So do not sit still. Do not allow the silent minority in the country to advance selfish agendas. You have to defend what is good for the country. You have to defend the reforms. The reforms are extremely important. The social security reform, the labor laws reform, just like the political reform, which will be important in the future. The tax reform, defend what is good for Brazil. Do not sit still. Because if we do sit still in 2018, we risk having the same person, the same person that introduced lies and theft and corruption in a public life in Brazil. Mr. Luiz Inácio, liar da Silva, he could come back as president. That is why we need to have a different attitude. The vote is everything in democracy. I am a supporter of Operation Car Wash and Judge Sergio Moro. But actually, I think it's better for the country that Lula is one of the candidates in 2018 and that he loses. He needs to lose. He needs to see that he's not being judged just by Sergio Moro, but, he, but he's being judged by the people. And he'll no longer play the victim. He'll no longer say he is the victim. And also, Dilma Rousseff, our former president, who says she was unjustly impeached, they're going to see that now the people said no to them. And in order for that to happen, you and other good people in our country, people with open hearts, people who say, who tell the truth, you have to do something, you have to act. And you have to rest assured that this is not just a movement of the business sector, of the industrial sector. This is a movement of the people, of the entire country. And then you can be sure that the banner you're going to raise, the banner that you're going to carry is not a red flag. It is the yellow and green flag of our country. Thank you. Magalhães for his final words. Good afternoon. Actually, good morning. I would just like to close by reminding Mayor João Doria that this meeting organized by the Council of the Americas and the American Chamber has everything to do with this message of how Brazil is seen in the eyes of foreign countries. We have been seeing significant progress. Of course, we still have some challenges ahead of us, but these, the foreign uh, perspective, the, 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 how Brazil looks in the eyes of foreign investors is something very positive. I'd like to thank the mayor for taking the time to come here talk to us. And Mayor João, I'd like to tell you that Along the lines of what you said about the participation of companies in the city of Sao Paulo, today we had a meeting with the council. You, you, you met some of our board members. And you know that the 
American Chamber is a non-profit institution. But today, through the members of our council, we were able to offer to the city of Sao Paulo one of the things that we have been doing for a long time, which is the How to Do Business. We started with How to Do Business in Brazil. It's a book that we publish here and in the United States. So there is a version in English. And today we're going to donate to the city of Sao Paulo the studies that uh, founded the publication of How to Do Business in Sao Paulo. This was sponsored by Caterpillar, IBM, Embratel, Votorantin, KPMG, PwC, Cartill, and City. So this is our contribution to the city of Sao Paulo. Thank you.